Good morning, and I want to welcome you to the First Baptist Church of Meridianville as we study God's Word on this Tuesday morning. And today we are in Psalm 120. And Psalm 120 is short enough that I can read it in its entirety. And so I'm going to do that. In my trouble, I cried to the Lord, and he answered me, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips, from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you, and what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? Sharp arrows of the warrior with burning coals of the broom tree. Woe is me, for I sojourn in Meshesh, for I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long has my soul had its dwelling place with those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Today, as we look at this passage of Scripture, it's actually a, a very rich passage of Scripture as we see the things that the psalmist tells us about his relationship to God. And the first thing that is revealed is that this is a personal testimony from a child of God. He says, in my trouble, I cried to the Lord. Um, uh, when I think of that, I think of Psalm 23, where David said, the Lord is my shepherd. In Psalm, in 150 Psalms, there are 150 Psalms in God's word. And you may not realize it, but the words, I, my, or me, I, my, and me occur 2,576 times. Um, 2,576 times in 150 Psalms. What does that tell me? It tells me that these Psalms are personal testimonies of someone who do, who's doing the very same thing we're doing, which is seeking to walk with God. It was Mark Twain that said that only three letters separate lightning from lightning bug. Three small letters. In our walk with God, the small words of I, me, and my, they mean absolutely everything. Because at some point, a person has to come into a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It's not enough to just know about God. Uh, we must know God. Uh, the, the Apostle J James said in James chapter 2, verse 19, You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. At some point, each and every one of us entered into an abiding relationship with the Lord through His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, do you remember that famous assurance passage in John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28, where the Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give, them, I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. Likewise, it was the Lord Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31, Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore, do not fear. You are of more value than many sparrows. The personal, this person, the Lord Jesus is talking about how personal God is with us. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Uh, Matthew 10, 29 through 31 um, he even numbers the hairs on our head. Uh, why does God do that? Because um, why does the psalmist say that God hears him? In Psalm 120, in my trouble, I cried to the Lord and he answered me. Psalm 120, verse 1. Uh, why does he believe that God heard him? Because he is not a nameless voice. He is... Uh, um, he is a somebody to God. Uh, Y'all remember the old song, Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. 
His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Um, the psalmist in this passage of Scripture gives us a personal testimony, but it's also not just a personal testimony. It's a personal testimony of a child of God with problems. The psalmist begins this psalm saying that he is in distress. In my trouble, I cried to the Lord. So the psalmist has trouble. It concludes in verse 7. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Um, I think that most of us would agree. Um, our aim in life, for most of us, is a problem-free existence. Most of us would gladly get rid of all our problems. We would get rid of our problems. We would get the, rid of the problems of our children. We would get rid of the problems of our friends. We would get rid of the problems of the world. Problems, it seems, are everywhere. Most of us wish we had a border wall built around our lives that would keep all of life's problems out. Um, because it seems that w once we get one problem fixed, like whack-a-mole, another problem surfaces. The psalmist, actually, in this passage of Scripture, had people who were slandering him. Psalm 120, verse 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips from a deceitful tongue. That's a genuine problem. Someone talking about you behind your back. Someone spreading lies. Perhaps this man had been sued and, uh, and a witness was bribed. Perhaps it was a sworn enemy. Perhaps it was a friend who had turned on him. Perhaps it was an employee who hated him. Perhaps it was his own flesh and blood. Perhaps it was a family member or, or, or even a child. Whatever the source, the psalmist knew the sting of hateful words. And before we move past this, we must investigate what problems do for us. Problems literally cause us to seek God. Um, the psalmist says, I cried to the Lord. Um, and you know what? Many people have come back to God. Many people have come back to the Lord. Many people have rededicated their lives all because of a big problem that entered their life. You know what? I don't like problems at all. But problems in, invariably create within us a greater dependence upon God. Uh, problems cause us to become humble, to be willing to say, oh, how I need God. Years ago, I uh, read a book by Jim Simbla. He's a pastor in Brooklyn, New York. And in the book, he told, us, he told a story about a man who lived on the streets of New York for years. And the man had not like had a bath in, in, in like three years. And he lived, he was, a, he was a drug addict. And Jim Simbla said, we were having an Easter service. And we had a lady sing in that Easter service who had been a drug addict and who had been homeless. She gave her testimony and then she sang. Well, it just so happened that this homeless man on this Easter Sunday had been looking for a place to get warm. And he had come into that worship service and had gone up to the very top of the, of the uh, worship uh, area and was sitting by himself. And he heard that woman give that testimony. And, he, and, and then she sang. And then they gave the invitation. And Jim Simbla said that when they gave the invitation, he said, I saw this guy come down and start walking down the aisle. He said, I immediately thought, oh my goodness, we've had a great day on Easter. And now the, the last thing that's going to happen on this Easter Sunday is this guy is going to come forward and hit on me for money. Um, because he said, you could tell he was homeless. He said, when the guy got within a few feet of him, he said, he stunk so bad. He said, I literally had to hold my breath. And the man came and grabbed Jim Simbla's hand, and he said, Jim Simbla said he put his head on my shoulder and said, um, 
I don't want your money. He said, I want the Jesus that that woman talked about. I've come to the end of my rope and I need the, the Jesus that she talked about. And Jim Simbla said that suddenly that stench that surrounded that man became the most beautiful perfume he had ever smelled as God brought salvation to that man. And, and, and now the man, I think the man actually works at that church and he's, he's become a mentor to other people who have, who have been drug addicts. But what brought him there that day was the, was the acknowledgement that number one, he needed a warm place to stay. But then number two, what brought him down that aisle that day was the fact that he had come to the end of his rope and he knew that he needed the Lord. Uh, problems do that for us. They bring us to our knees and they, uh, they cause us to be willing to say, Lord, however you need to change my life, whatever you need to do is fine with me. Finally, this is a personal testimony of a child of God who believes in God's power. In Psalm 120, verses 3 and 4, O oh, deceptive tongue, what will God do to you? How he will increase your punishment. You will be pierced with sharp arrows and burned with glowing coals. The psalmist believes in God's power to bring judgment to those people who slander him. He believed in the power of God. Um, let me ask you, um, how often are we as human beings tempted to try to fix our own problems or just maybe at times just live with them? How often do we, when we're treated unfairly, we want to vindicate ourselves? How often do we, when someone is mean to us, how, how often do we want to take our revenge? The psalmist prayed about a particular situation that was wearing on him, and he prayed to God because he believed, he believed that God could take care of those people who were slandering him. Uh, you say, well, what does that mean for us? It simply means that you and I, when we are dealing with difficulties or we're dealing with difficult people, that the first thing that we do is turn them over to God. It means that we ask for God to intervene. Let me ask you, what are you presently praying for right now? Uh, what are you presently committing to the Lord? Um, that's a very important question. You say, why is that an important question? Because our prayer life is a barometer of our faith. The more we pray, the more we commit things to God, that's a sign that we are depending upon God and that our, that our faith is healthy. Uh, let me encourage you today, just get a piece of paper and write down three or four or five things. Just write down a couple of things and commit those things to prayer for the entire month of December. Pray about them every day during the month of December, and see what God does. Um, the psalmist said that he believed in God's power. Today, I want to thank you again for studying God's word with me, and I look forward to this coming Thursday when we study yet again. God bless you, and have a great day.